Hey guys, Rob here, and today I'm going to unbag this Time Sleuth from Castle Mania Games. I pre-ordered it a few months ago and it got delayed, but it's early June and I finally got it. And what we're going to do is test the lag of several monitors, especially the 2007 FPB, the IPS, and the VA versions. And just, you know, some random other monitors I have on hand to just do a comparison. And if I can get it to work, I think I may be able to test some CRTs, but I have to check to see if I have a converter because the Time Sleuth only takes HDMI or only has an HDMI output. I know that there's converters so you can convert it to component, but I'm going to see if I can just figure out how to test just regular standard televisions because there are a few that I'd like to test. But without any further delay, let's go ahead and take a look at the Time Sleuth. It is an input lag, input lag tester like the Leo Bodnar one from uh, the UK, except that this one will actually allow you to test different resolutions, which is pretty cool. And let's see what we got here. This, I don't even know what this is. Rondo Products, I guess it's something from Castle Mania Games. And here's the time sleep. I think this is, uh, maybe it's not. Initially it was 3D printed, but I guess maybe this may be, mm, can't quite tell. It might still be 3D printed, just a good job at it. But um, you have a selector here, so you can select the different types of resolutions that you want to test, and you can custom program the firmware so you can test things like 240p, 480i, 480p, 720p, and 1080p, which is going to be what I'm going to do. You can update the firmware through this little JTAG port here, and yeah, then you can set the different type of resolutions that you want to be testing. Uh, here is, I believe, what we put against the screen to detect the flash of light that's going to be produced by the machine. So I think, yeah, so there's the HDMI here, HDMI out here. So we're going to connect this to the HDMI end of the monitor. Um, and then it will flash uh, bars of white light and it will use the sensor here to determine how long it takes from when it sends the flash to when it receives it to determine the display lag. I think this is, okay, so this is for power. Hmm, it may not have come with the cable <laughs> to do the firmware update, unfortunately, so I might have to order that from Amazon. I don't know what it defaults to, but I'll, I'll check it out. But yeah, this is just gonna be for power. So for power, it's just, it's actually, that's an old port, that's a mini USB, it's not even micro. I actually prefer the, the mini to micro because the micro one has a little bar in the middle that always tends to break. So that's where I would prefer it be USB-C, but you know, you get what you get. And then this is just for power. So I'm going to be using just like an anchor uh, USB power source and uh, yeah, just an HDMI cable. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. Not a whole lot to it. So let me get to work on figuring out what resolutions it defaults to. Um, and then I'll probably have to order this cable here to program it. All right. So uh, yeah, let's move on. So one of the first things I'm going to test is this new monitor I just picked up. It's a HP, what is it? E4U30A. So it was made in 2014. And what's weird about this is that it has a display port. So see the display port symbol there. It has display port, DVI, BGA, and then you know, USB, whatever the heck that is. I always forget. It's a weird one. But uh, yeah, no HDMI, um, but a display port, which is a weird thing. And it is a um, four by three, but it is not, uh, I have it currently set, this is the, the time sleuth output into signal. I have it set to 720p. So I, I don't have the reprogram cable. So right now um, I'm dealing with the default ones, which is 240p uh, on setting one, 480i, on two, 480p on three, 720p on four. And you can see that's what it's up on it right there. And then finally, uh, five is 1080p. Now I'm testing these old four by three monitors, so they don't they don't support 1080p. There's the 2007 FPB. That's actually the LG one. So that is the IPS panel. But um, yeah, let's let's check it out. Again, uh, it's set to so it says right there 720p. But I'll. I'll uh, try the other ones to see what it supports. This one, I believe, is a 1024 max. 
I don't know, it'll, it'll stay in a second, so I have to put it upside down. The sensor is actually on this crosshair here, so I have to hold it upside down so I can read it. As you can see, it's really low, 2.24 uh, milliseconds, which is exceptional. All right, this is 720p, 60 hertz, and in the middle, you got about nine, and because it draws from top to bottom, the bottom is always the slowest, at the bottom we have 17 so that's one frame of lag at the bottom but you know typically we want to you know average about so take the middle one so about you know nine point nine and a half milliseconds which is a little over half of a frame if you're playing at 60 frames per second so that's really really good um let's move it to well it's not going to support 1080p so let's try 480p and let me click it over one so now it's doing 480p output, and let's see what we got. Again, about two milliseconds at the top. A little even better, uh, slightly less than nine milliseconds at the middle, and at the bottom, we're getting about 16. So 16 is exactly one frame if you're doing 60 frames per second. So that's actually really, really good. Um, this HP is, is pretty cool. Um, and that it supports DisplayPort. So if you have a modern PC, you can hook this up as a secondary or something like that if you wanted to do some gaming on this. So let me go over to the, the I have a couple of Dells here. Um, I believe this one is IPS and that one's VA. So let me check those out. Let me set that up. All right, so I have uh, two 2007 FPBs up. This is the Samsung one, which is VA, and this is the LG one, which is IPS. So we're going to go ahead and start from the top again. And this one is getting about two milliseconds, same as that HP one, roughly. On the middle, again, just under 10. And at the bottom, we're getting about one frame. So it's pretty consistent. That's a 480p, let's try 720p, switch it over to 720p. By the way, I did try 280, uh, sorry, 240p and 480i on the HP and it didn't work. Of course, 1080p didn't work either because it doesn't even have support for that. Um, so it's a 720p, again, two milliseconds. Pretty consistent. A little over 10, just about 10 for the middle and for the bottom, we're getting a, a little over a frame. So again, for both of them, that HP and, and this uh, LG version, of the 2007 FPB. They're both getting around one frame at the bottom, two milliseconds at the top, and just a little over half a frame of lag on the middle, which is really, really good. So uh, let me swap to this one, give me a sec. Okay, so this is the Samsung uh, VA panel. So we're gonna start with 480p again. This one was getting, the other two, the HP and this IPS one we're getting, the, the LG one we're getting about two. This one is pretty jumpy. Uh, it's not super great. Between low fives and mid sevens. So that was a high seven. So we'll call it six um, in the middle. We're getting about a frame, just a hair over. So 16, 17, well, there's an 18 in there. This is um, not as consistent. The other ones were not bouncing around so much. So this is a little over, not quite a frame and a half. So again, a frame is 16 milliseconds. This is getting around 19, 20, 21. Wow, it's all over the place. So yeah, um, that could be kind of bad. Uh, you know, you don't want your, it's better to have a lower, you know, or, or a slower panel and have it be consistent, slightly slower than for it to be jumping around because, you know, as you're moving around the, I mean, it's not a whole lot that you're talking about a millisecond to two milliseconds jumping around, but that's a, that's a little odd because the other two, again, the, the, they're both 2000 FPVs, 2007 FPVs, but the Samsung one's just a little, a little less stable and a little slower. So I'm going to switch it to 720p. Let's see what we get here. So 720p doing the same test and we're getting about the same. I'm going up to nine for a second, almost nine there. Okay, middle, we should be in about 16, 17, yeah. Okay. 
in the bottom. So like the other two panels, it's slightly worse in 720p than 4, 480p, but still pretty much in range of each other. That's not too far apart. Um, just for grins, let me try 480i. I expect it not to work because it didn't work at all. Oh, that's 480p. 480i should not work. Yeah, it's out of range. And then 240p should definitely... Ooh, it's, it's trying. But yeah, you can kind of make out that it says 240p, but right there maybe. But yeah, it's uh, it's not going to work. And then for the heck of it, 1080p should not work. No, it's out of range. Let's go back to 720 Okay, so, so far the LG panel and that HP panel, or I don't know who makes that panel on the HP, but they're both uh, pretty, pretty solid performance. And this one's not too bad either. You know, get about a frame of lag. So yeah, these four by three panels, even though they're pretty old, still very playable and uh, look pretty good. So yeah, I'm kind of surprised that they're actually <laughs> as low as they are. I went out and tested one of my modern panels, and it was also getting about nine in the middle. And that's one of those modern 144 hertz, or maybe it's 160 hertz, actually, or 165, whatever it is, uh, was getting around the same nine to 10 frames, or milliseconds in the middle. So yeah, these these guys are pretty good. So again, 2000, 2007 FPB, um, LG panel, Samsung, you can tell by the serial number, this one ends with an L, this one ends with an S. And then on here, I got this guy for $10.50. <laughs> you can see down there, uh, from Savers Thrift Store. Anyway, thanks for watching.